Hi, it's Carl from PresentationExpressions.com, and this week I've got for you how to avoid boring statistics in presentations. Now, why is this even important? Well, eventually you're probably going to have to present something with data or statistics, and it's going to be really important, especially if you're in business, if it's for school, if it's for science, if it's for any kind of research, you're going to need to present statistics at some point, and you're going to want to know how to avoid boring ones because typically they're really boring. They're on, you know, the they look like a document, they look like someone just copied and pasted some really boring graph or chart onto a slide and then they hope that people will understand that. And really that sucks. Okay, you don't want to do that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have a before and after for a typical graph. And the graph I'm gonna show you is an actual graph that was given to me to help this person to try and improve it. And there's going to be three types of data that are presented in this graph here. And I'm going to show you how you can present that a little bit easier and better. Now, the problem is that this graph is obviously not going to be very easy to quickly comprehend. You really don't want your audience to try and decipher or guess what your graphs are trying to explain to them. Because the problem is, is that you know the data really well. You've spent a lot of time with it, but your audience doesn't have that ability. They're only going to be in your presentation for a relatively short time. So they're not going to be able to fully grasp what you've tried to do or accomplished in maybe several months or weeks or whatever. So this is the original right here. Okay. Now, as I said, there are three things were mentioned or sort of described on here. The very first one, the blue line is ethanol. And this is for the trend of ethanol production. Okay. And this is going to be for biodiesel production. And finally, it's going to be the utilization ratio of corn for ethanol, which I actually have no idea what that means, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, the bars there, there's some sort of information we want to present. And the title of this is evidence review number one. And the subtitle is the trend of world biofuel production. So let's look at how we can present this better. What we want to do is present each set of data on its own. So right away, Start with the title, evidence, view number one. Make it like this instead of like this, okay? Don't want to do this, all right? What you really want to do is you want to show them as one single slide like a chapter in a book. The next chapter would be to explain that it's going to be world biofuel production trends, a photo here of an actual biofuel factory, then the data itself, okay? So this was about ethanol first. Now. I've put a picture there, I've put the data that I want to present, okay, in there. This is an average of the trend or the prices or the, sorry, the production, sorry, uh, during 1975 until 2004. And on the picture there, or in the picture there, wood is actually used to make ethanol. So I found a picture that was appropriate. And notice that the white part of the screen is actually a square. It's approximately a square. So that's what you want to aim for if you try this style of slide. And then again, same thing here. Okay, I've actually matched the colors as well. Wheat is also used to make ethanol. I've kind of matched the green with a green, slightly green text. And same with this one here. So three types of information, 1975 to 2004. You know, you want to explain that, why this is important or significant. And then it jumps up quite a bit between 2005 and 2008. And then again, it jumps up more between 2009 and 2010. So you should be explaining also what the significance of this is, you know, explain how this could have happened, all different types of information you can then present. And the audience is going to be able to listen to you instead of trying to figure out what's on your chart. Now, again, looking at this here, we're going to now talk about how you can sort of show everything on one slide instead. So if you don't have time to make, you know, three different slides, then you can do something a little bit different here. So we're going to talk now about the biodiesel. So here, Soybeans are used to make biodiesel. So I made this slide here with the picture of the soybeans, put a title there to talk about the biodiesel, and then I just showed each of the three things I want to talk about between these three time periods. Really simple to do, clean looking, makes them remember because you're only going to show one at a time, right? You're going to talk about this one first, then this one, and then finally the third thing. Now, this was the original again, okay? <laughs> totally different, right? So now let's look at the utilization ratio of corn for ethanol. Now in this one here, it's a little bit different because it's a ratio. We're going to talk about a percentage of some sort. So in order to show that, I made this slide here. Picture of corn, I put a box in front of it, okay, on top of the corn. 
I made the box a similar color as the corn and lightened it obviously, made it a transparent color so that I could put the text over top so the text is clear. Then, because it's a percentage, I did this. It gets bigger, and then finally, the main one, which is from 2009 to 2010. So your eye kind of follows along from the small one to the next one to the next one. So you'd be talking about each one as they appear, and then that's a good way for your audience to follow along with your slide instead of looking ahead as well. So finally, what you want to do then is you want to summarize all of the data. And here, there are really two things to summarize here, between 1975 and 2004, and then suddenly this huge change in the trend from 2005. So what you can do then is show that from 1975 to 2004, everything was going along this kind of smooth road. Then in 2005, you hit this really steep curve and suddenly the prices just you know, exploded, okay, or the production exploded. And the reason why this person wanted to mention this was because of record high oil prices. He was saying view number one was because of record high oil prices. So again, there's the original. And then if you really want to, okay, you can make your own graph as well, all right? So if we look at this, we can say, okay, I want to make a graph somehow to show this information. I really need to have a graph. So if you really have to, make your own. And you can make it look like this. Just use any kind of background, it really doesn't matter, but color is better because it looks more visually appealing. And then just draw rectangles, okay? Use the shape tool, draw the rectangles, draw the smallest one first, and then copy and paste, okay, across, and then just kind of extend them up. And they don't have to be exact, okay? They're just sort of approximations of the amounts. And now I've filled in just 1.3 billion at the top here, but you can also put in the numbers for the other bars as well, that's no problem. And also, you can put the dates, of course, like I've done here. That's a really good thing to do. Make sure you include at least some information. And when you explain this, talk about what the numbers are or something to explain what you're doing here. Okay, so to summarize everything, I want you to remember three things. Number one is that your audience doesn't really know your data, okay, like the way you know it. So always keep that in mind. So when you're preparing your slides and preparing your graphs and charts, think about, okay, you know what, I know this stuff, but they really don't, so let's simplify it as much as possible, even if they are experts in that same field as you. You want to have a separate slide for each type of data or information that you're going to present on your slide. Just like how I showed you, you separate everything out into its own slide, so the audience is focused just on that one point. And then, of course, you want to summarize everything so they can remember what you said. And also, if you really need to have a graph or a chart, make your own. That is it. That was how to avoid boring statistics in presentations. If you have any questions or if you have any comments, please let us know in the comments section of the video here or within our site at presentationexpressions.com. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you again soon.